All right, so today we're going to go over some bicep exercises you've probably never done before. Crank up the intensity on some of the ones you have and get those biceps growing. So if you're ready, let's get after it. Whew, it's not gonna take a lot of weight. All right, so we're starting out the preacher curl because not only do you want you to think about you know different movements, hand placements, different angles, but also taking the existing stuff you love and you already do and making it that much better. Now these are good, but one of the problems I see with my clients and a lot of times with myself is the angle of these actually promotes you to get a little motion into the movement where not only do you get your shoulders involved when you're tucking forward, but you use that momentum to force it up and you kind of lose the connection with the bicep. So what we're gonna do to fix that is turn around and face the other way. Now what this is gonna do is kind of mimic that incline curl and you just shove your elbows back against there. And I can tell my clients to flare around and yank this up as much as they want, but they're so locked in that all they can do is just force up a nice clean contraction. If they can't get it up, they're stuck, right? That's all there is to it. And the second thing it does is really nice is it changes the point of that peak contraction. So normally a, a preacher curl like this, it's gonna happen towards the you know, bottom of the movement. It's first quarter of the movement, you're gonna feel that the most pressure on that bicep. With this, the nice part is right when you're parallel to the floor, that's the peak contraction. So it really feels a little bit more natural too. We talked about incline curls in the past and drag curls, so we're going to morph those two together and do incline drags. Nice part about these is it gets a couple different things involved. One, you're working against gravity the entire time, so just even hold the weight at that angle, your bicep has to do a lot of work. The second thing is you're kind of drawing that line from your hips to your shoulders and you're trying to pull those hands back against that. For me, that's just a better contraction, right? Instead of the regular curl, I actually prefer to do a lot more drag curl stuff because that contraction's forced, right? So with these, you have to think, you have to keep your shoulder out, there's a lot of work you have to do mentally, just make sure you have a contraction. When you're pulling straight back into it, that bicep is forced to contract no matter what. Here's a little behind the scenes to let you know that you don't need to use a lot of weight on these. So the first set, probably got 15 reps. Next one, eight. The last one, I got like four reps. I'm using 20 pounds. So if that tells you how intense the actual movement is, it doesn't take much. This is probably one of my favorite cable exercises for biceps, which brings me to another point. When it comes to arms, do cable work. It might not work on every other body part, but for arm growth, cables are king. I'd say 90% of the growth I got on my arms came from cables. So what you're gonna do is walk yourself forward, let those elbows drift behind you, and start with a drag curl. 20, 30 reps, and then back yourself up and turn into a regular curl. If you're facing the free motion machine, just turn around and face the other way and do a regular curl. If your arms aren't burning by this point, then there literally has to be something wrong with you. You don't need this exact machine. I just happen to love this one. You can use any free motion fly machine that has oscillating arms. Just bring them right down to your side and then start the movement like that. So one of the common threads with my arm training is the shorter range of motion, right? It's just what you feel the most. So part of it is it's so pumped right now that that's all I got, right? It's as high as I can go. But if I wanted to continue the contraction all the way up, I'd have to push that elbow forward and lose the movement altogether. So for me, that range right there pushes a ton of blood, breaks down the muscle, hypertrophy, that's all I want. One movement I love that I don't see a lot of people do, which I think I found the reason why, it's a pain in the ass to drag this bench all the way across the gym, is incline cable curls. And the reason for that is it forces you to have really good form. Because a lot of people I see come in and a lot of clients, what they'll do is the first thing they do when they try to even curl something light is they tuck those elbows back and try to curl up and they use a lot of shoulder, right? There's not even really much extension and flexion with that bicep. A lot of it is just the movement of those shoulders and they feel like they're doing something correct, but they're, they're just not, right? There's no movement whatsoever with that bicep. There's a static hold, which, It'll work a little bit, but what we want is that extension of the muscle, that contraction, and really getting that nice flex on the bicep. So the nice part about these, you tuck those elbows in front, so they have to use that bicep. They can't drop those shoulders at all. You're leaned back, so they stretch all the way down to their legs. It's a full stretch on these, and you only come up as high as that contraction allows. Don't push it any higher. Don't let those elbows drift up. They stay in the same spot the entire time. One thing that tonight made me realize is I have so many different tweaks and variations on exercises and movements and not just arms, but every body part. And you know, that's good for you, not just because you see something different, it's nice to try something new, but I think these are better variations, right? They've helped me develop over the years and I think you can get a ton of value from this. So if you like the video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, get after it, get growing. I'll talk to you soon.